Welcome back everyone, welcome back to our everyday living. What you are looking at is a Panasonic NA140VX3 10 kilo front loader washing machine. Now you can probably notice that it has come up unable to supply water, please check tap. Now tap I know is turned on, um, got it on the cold wash as you can see. Uh, tap is definitely turned on back here. This is how I test things out. Now I'll be doing this step by step. You can see that the tap is turned on, right, fully on. So I don't turn them completely on. That way if I do get up to doing a video of anything like that, you can see that the, tap, the hose is actually going in behind that power, power cord uh, up to the actual inlet. Now when it says that, it's usually a diaphragm or the electronics in it. Now, it's usually the, the electronics in a lot of ways. So let's dive into this, find out what the problem is. I've got a funny feeling I'll probably have to replace the whole thing. It's a lot easier to replace the whole lot than um, trying to replace the diaphragms. So the first thing to do is actually turn it off, power it down, as we all know we're playing with electrics, turn the water off, turn him off, disconnect it from the wall to be safe anyway, pull that out, that's all we need to do, throw that away, get that out of the road, safety first with electrics, all right, undo the hose, Dribble a bit of water. Didn't grab myself a rag. Better grab me yourself a rag. Where's a rag? Yeah, I'll grab a rag. Paper towel. That's good enough. Put our water down there. Now, all we need is a pair of flat nose pliers, flat edge screwdriver, the new part, and same as what I always use, the old tech gun with a Phillips head on. Let's move that out of the road. Put that over here where all of our spare parts are and God knows what all of our paraphernalia stuff that are connecting up over here. Now you've got three screws. Now that oh, before I get started, what's the I think I already said the model, didn't I? Oh, I think I did. Yes, I did. NA140VX3, 10 kilo. Maximum speed of about 1400 RPMs. That's a fair bit. Right, let's get in here, undo the three screws on the back of this one. Hang on to those, we'll put them back in the holes. That way you don't lose them. Come over here. Tune's in the background over there. Alright, whip the lid off. Just don't need to take it right off. I'm going to lift, lift it back a bit, pull back. Put it to about there. Put our screws back. So we know where they are. So we don't misplace them too. That's what it's mainly all about. Don't want to misplace any of these. Don't want to go scratching through the scrap pile. Right, so now we disconnect power there, power there, power there, power there, power there, just pull them out of the road, now there's two screws on the back, we're just going to replace the whole unit, that's what we're doing here, undo the two screws on the back, not do it up, that one there, that one there, see I would have scrapped this one out if I didn't actually think about repairing what do i do with that okay pull that out got to get some paper towel put underneath it so if there's any residue water inside there it's going to drip on the paper towel not down on the electrics safety first that under there pair of long nose well not long nose flat nose pliers take our clamps off
Then the easiest way, because they've been on there for so long, grab your pliers, give it a twist. Give it a twist around the actual hose itself, not where it's actually got any old plastic on the edge there. Stay there, paper. I don't think I got enough. I don't want water going down there. Don't want the thing shorting out. Right, that's coming off easy. Should be able to wiggle that off now. So you don't damage the hose. That's off. Let that sit onto that. Do the same with this next one. Because if you pull on it, you're actually making it tighter. So wiggling it makes it better. That to there, drain that inside. Right, we'll get our new part in the box. I've already had a look to see if it may be the same. It's an aftermarket one. Not a genuine one. So, a genuine one for these is around, uh, with postage, 109 bucks. I saved myself. Got it for about 20 bucks. And sit this one on. Clamps are already there. Now I usually sell 10 kilo wash machines when working. I'm hoping this fixes the problem for about $350. That's better than actually scrapping it out. I wouldn't get $350 on one machine scrapping it out. No way. So it's much easier to repair them. That's the way I've always thought. Simple items, you can diagnose the problem by like this one here, it's very technical and it tells you what the problem is and that sort of thing, so it's much easier to fix it for, say, 20 bucks. Hell yeah. Right, that's all back together there. Take our paper out of the road. We did get some water on it. Put that back in its hole. Down here. Line the holes up, slowly start it with the fingers. That's one started. That there. That to there. The other one. Try and get it central. There we go. That's that. Put our wires back. Now when you're disconnecting these, they've got an arrow and basically it looks like it was um, spliced down the centre when their factory done this. So there's an arrow there and an arrow there, so you can't get it really mixed up with you, you can cross it over and that sort of thing. And usually when you take them off they stay in their position anyway. to there, that to there, that one back into there, that to there, put the lid back on, and we'll see if I've actually fixed it. We'll put it back onto a cold cycle, and I'll put this in a, in a, in and let's just do a bit of a time lapse, see if it does do a bugger up or things like that. See what happens. Come on, get on there. That's there, that's there. Whoop, paper's coming with me. It's so simple to change something as quick as that. Instead of throwing a machine away. Like if you get a problem with your pump, check your filter down the front. 
always helps. I usually find dollar coins, 50 cent pieces, 20 cent pieces. Pick that paper up. Sometimes hairpins too. Plug our power back in. That there, water. No leaks. She's tight enough. Alrighty, yeah, we'll turn it on and find out. Put it through a cycle. far no problem not a problem whatsoever finished beautiful not a problem at all so not bad not bad at all um i reckon i fixed it so anyway that's how you fix a wash machine with a water problem. Um, if you like this sort of content, let us know in the uh, comments. Uh, if you want to see me doing more fixing of wash machines, dryers, I don't do fridges. Uh, they're just a no-no for me. I haven't got a gas license or anything like that for degassing or anything like that. Um, but if you want to see me do some more wash washing machines dryers fixing those sort of things um even if it's say scrapping out let us know in the comments um also too i'm glad i fixed this one instead of it being scrapped out it's worth 350 dollars for me i reckon the part bear with me i'll find out how much the part was We'll have a squizzy through the phone. Come on, phone. Phone don't want to work for me. Where is it? Bear with us, everyone. The part, there you go, was only $20, like I was saying. And then there's postage on top of that, which is only about $9.95. So, about 
30 bucks. So I'm gaining a lot of money here. So anyway, um, if you come this far in the video, everyone, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you do subscribe, don't forget to hit the notification bell. That way you get notified when we put a new video out. So till next time, everyone. Happy dumpster driving, happy scrapping, and I hope you enjoy the fixing part of it too. So this was a Panasonic NA140VX3 10 kilo washing machine repair. So till next time, everyone. Cheerio.